As a radiation oncologist, my job is to use radiation to treat tumors. Radiation therapy comes in all different shapes and sizes and all different energies. Uh, for diagnostic uh, imaging, it usually uses a low energy. The type of radiation I use is a very high energy and it's usually given over a very large volume. And it's been done since the late 1800s for the treatment of tumors. And it's very, very effective. And one of the reasons I feel comfortable with the use of medical radiation, not just for imaging, but also for therapy, is because for the 15 years that I've been doing this, I've had patients that I've been following for this long. And I've learned to understand that the long-term effects are relatively well contained when done properly at properly accredited facilities. Um, but, but therapeutic radiation is you know, involved in the treatment of over 50% of all cancer patients uh, nationwide and it's extremely effective and oftentimes is preferable to other treatments like chemotherapy or surgery because of the limited side effects. So the side effects of therapeutic radiation uh, typically would involve whatever area you're treating. For example, if I'm treating a brain tumor, the radiation would obviously have to go through my, my, my scalp to get there, so you might experience some hair loss. If I deliver too much radiation, it can cause some diminished blood supply in that part of the brain that I'm treating. But with careful technology and with precision delivery that we have, those types of side effects are typically very limited. When you're treating someone with breast cancer, for example, you might get some skin reaction, but that's about it. When you're treating someone with prostate cancer, you might get some, some you know, minor issues with urination, um, but those are typically acute effects that resolve. The long-term effects are typically very moderate or very minimal. Because therapeutic radiation has been around uh, since the late 1800s, um, and it's been used in a very widespread fashion since the 1950s. There's lots and lots, hundreds of thousands of patients that have been evaluated for the long-term effects on the radiation. And what they've found is that, for example, um, there was a study in France that looked at 10,000 women that had radiation for breast cancer and 10,000 women that did not have any radiation whatsoever. And they found that the incidence of radiation-induced cancers was about the same in both groups. It was about 10 to 12 patients uh, in each group. So there wasn't an extremely high risk. I think the most important thing to understand is that tests are given for a specific reason. And if there's a better test, like an MRI, your doctor will recommend that. But every situation is unique. And it's really important to understand what your doctor's perspective is before offering a particular therapy.